All right, hi, GDQ Games Committee. Uh, my name is Moonblaze Wolf, uh, and I'm going to be playing 1980X for you today uh, as one of my uh, speedrun submissions for AGDQ. Uh, 1980X is a Kickstarter-backed game that came out earlier this summer. Uh, the Kickstarter's been in the works for a couple years now, and it's one of the games that I've been most excited to learn the speedrun for ever since I saw it announced. Uh, the game itself is a collection of retro style arcade games, so it's really kind of like five games in one. Um, and in fact, I kind of joke with people sometimes that it's sort of like the pentathlon of speedrunning because while the games themselves aren't super, super difficult, um, just the variety of gameplay that you get in a playthrough of this game uh, really makes it for a fun speedrun. Uh, it's really novel as a game experience in that way, in my opinion. Um, the speedrun itself is also really consistent. Uh, my, I'm the current world record holder for the category that we're doing today, which is no cutscenes. Uh, and my world record time is 34.32. Uh, but most speedruns of this game are going to clock in around 37 minutes pretty consistently, just to a variety of factors. Um, my favorite thing about the game, and I think the thing that will make it a really potentially good marathon game, is just the aesthetics and the style of the game, the graphics, the music, um, and just the feeling of nostalgia that I always get when I'm playing it. And I know from playing it in my channel that people also get that when they're watching it as well. So um, it's also got a lot of pre-built in uh, donation points because the way the no cutscenes run works is we play one of the games, we back out to the main menu, and then we start the next one. And over the course of the run, um, this saves about 12 minutes in cutscenes. Um, but even that transition back and forth between games uh, creates some really nice moments to uh, read donations and um, do different things like that. So, um, so I'm really excited to show this game off for you. I hope, uh, I hope it's uh, something that gets some consideration. And uh, without further ado, I think I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, the timing rules for this category, uh, time is going to start when I select Beating Heart, and it's going to end when I reach the end credits of the game. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started here in five, four, three, two, one, go. Uh, and we're going to start with Beating Heart. Uh, Beating Heart is the fighting arcade style, so like, you know, kicking, punching game. Uh, I know uh, I played a lot of games like this in the arcades when I was growing up, and uh, it's definitely a classic. All of these games are like classic style RP or uh, not RPGs, excuse me, um, arcade games or retro games. They're going to look really familiar to a lot of folks that are watching. Uh, here we meet our hero kid. Uh, they are a uh, teenager from suburbia in the year 1980X. And the story of the game is this is kind of like their uh, coming of age story as well. We'll see little bits and pieces of that here throughout the game, but um, you really need to play the entire game to get the full effect of that, so. The game itself is just so beautiful. Um, I love the style and aesthetic, personally. There's some of the little touches and things that the developer Hybit Studios did are just really, really cool, in my opinion. All right, so right out of the gate here, um, this is probably, Beating Heart is um, probably the easiest to complete, but the hardest to speedrun of the games uh, that we're gonna be doing. Um, I'm actually off to a really good start here, except for that. Um, uh, one of the techniques that we employ is uh, what I call stutter punching, which means that um, when I normally do my attack inputs, the, the fourth input is a roundhouse kick that knocks the enemy backwards. Um, and if I do that, I have to wait for them to get up, which is really lame. So instead what we do is we stagger our attack inputs um, so that we never do that roundhouse kick. And uh, by doing that, um, by doing that, uh, we basically just stun lock the enemies uh, as long as we're not interrupted and uh, we can defeat them a lot easier. Um, so this is going very well so far. Um, the other thing I'm doing, which probably hasn't been super noticeable yet, um, but I'm running all the way through the zone air, uh, the load areas, and by doing that, oh, don't run away. Fine. Okay, run away. I'll beat these guys first. Um, by doing that, I load in um, the maximum number of enemies. Um, well, that worked out. And that, because I can hit multiple enemies at once, that usually allows me to clear the stages a little faster. Uh, I also like taking out those uh, motorcycle guys with a flying kick. 
But other than that, I basically just want to punch everything to death because I don't want to um, do those roundhouse kicks because those are going to be time losses. So you see me doing that stutter punching here. Um, this is a really annoying combination of guys here. Um, those two, the guy with the mohawk and the, uh, the big guy. Uh, I actually handled that pretty well that time, but they have different reaches and different hitboxes. Um, which is the hardest thing about doing this uh, part of the speedrun, in my opinion, is uh, you can get bad patterns where basically you can't defeat the enemies uh, optimally because, like, kind of right there, uh, one of them was able to hit me while I was taking out the other one, um, and that's not great. So, yeah, so a lot of times this sort of, yeah, and I took a death there. That does, I usually take a death, um during this just because you run into one of those patterns and it's just really difficult to get a uh, get an enemy down. But I recovered pretty well there. Ooh, I got the punch that time, not the kick. That's pretty sweet. Um, this is actually the end. Um, that was very good. So I'm actually entering a cutscene here. I can't do anything else. And I'm just waiting for the visual cue uh, that the game is over, which is... Uh, this hooded figure jumping off the wall here. So there's my quit back to the main menu. Uh, that was a really good beating heart. Um, you probably get the most variance of any of the games in the run on beating heart. Um, I guess kill screen at the end, uh, also due to the RNG that's involved in that, but I'll talk more about that later. But uh, that was a really good beating heart, even with the one death. Um, our next game is Out of the Void. Um, it's the space shooter game. Um, and you can kind of see here between games, uh, depending on the game, uh, you have to load back into the main menu and then you have to load up the next game. So it's not it's it's not too bad. It's usually like 30 seconds to a minute of downtime. And as we know, that's a great time to read some donations during a marathon. So we're getting ready for out of the void here, uh, the space shooter coming up. Uh, there's not too much to Out of the Void. Um, the biggest thing you can do is just not get blown up. Uh, your spaceship has three health, so you on the third hit you will die. Uh, the early part of the game is not too bad. There's basically two stages. Uh, the first stage is pretty easy. The second stage is a little bit more challenging, I would say. Um, you don't really have to kill anything specifically except for... Uh, there's a couple of these yellow ships that have power-ups. You definitely want to get those. Other than that, it's kind of, especially for this first level, just sort of keeping the path in front of you clear of enemies. So I mainly just focus on that. Almost took a hit there because I shot a little early. Uh, one other thing you probably already noticed is you can uh, power up the cannon. Um, that's actually pretty um, important for certain mini-bosses and stuff because uh, you'll want to hit them with a full-powered cannon shot the moment you're able to do so. But aside from that, it's basically an auto-scroller. Um, this is the first mini-boss. He drops a couple drones. Uh, actually is invulnerable right now until there's a little visual cue. He starts shaking there. And as soon as he shakes, if you hit him with a full-powered shot, and then it doesn't take too much to finish him off from there. Big kabooms. And uh, now we go flying off into the asteroid belt. Uh, for the first part, it's pretty safe down here at the bottom of the screen, so I usually just hang out here. This part's not too bad. Everything follows the same pattern uh, every time. So once you kind of learn how to avoid everything, it's not too bad. Um, and then I do need to get this weapon. Got it before the giant asteroid, which always feels good. And then we got our first boss fight coming up here. You want to hit her with a full powered shot as soon as you are able to. And then basically just keep your fire on her uh, dodge that lunging attack, um, dodge this shot, but uh, as long as you keep your fire on her, not too bad. So that's stage one. Uh, stage two is a lot more difficult for a variety of reasons. Uh, the enemies are harder. 
Uh, we're going to have some of these turret enemies coming up here that I really need to get rid of as soon as they appear on the screen. Um, because otherwise they are going to put a lot of projectiles out there that can hit me. Um, the second part that makes this uh, second stage more difficult is you've got some environment that you can run into uh, and take damage from. So um, as of right now, I still have full health. Um, obviously, I want to keep it that way. So far, so good. That's one of the trickier spots from movement perspective. Um, and then again here, like the biggest thing coming up is just I want to take out those turrets like as soon as I possibly can, including right here. There's a turret up here. I'm very aggressive about getting up there and taking out because otherwise it's really difficult to not get hit by the shots. Uh, those are the hardest parts of this stage already that we're, we're actually through now, so the rest shouldn't be too bad. Just have a couple more things to avoid. And we'll be coming up on the end here shortly. This wave of enemies can be a little bit annoying just because they fill up the screen with so many projectiles, so I just try to take them out as fast as possible. Um, and keep a path clear for myself. But we are to the final boss of in or out of the void here. Um, the final boss is not particularly scary. Uh, it's kind of stuck to the wall like a lot of the old school uh, space shooter bosses are. Um, the hitbox is up here on the head. Basically, I just need to hit it with a full powered shot right away. Keep my fire on it and then just dodge those green projectiles when they come out. Um, but there's like a very nice like safe spot that I can sit in right here and just keep my fire on the head. No problem. And um, that's it for Out of the Void. I just have to escape from the uh, exploding base. That is definitely not a Death Star. Uh, interesting thing, like, this debris and stuff can't hurt you, so... just I like to dodge it just purely for the visual effect, but you don't actually have to dodge it. Um, and that was really good. Uh, our next game is Runaway. Uh, Runaway is the driving game. It's kind of like Outrun. I've found a couple of time saves in this game more recently that make it a little bit better. Um, I'm probably, my times at it now are probably even a little bit better generally than when I got the world record for it. Um, so I'll talk about those. But uh, basically with Runaway, the trick is to not run into anything, just like when you're driving normally. So uh, there's not too much to say there. Uh, there's a couple turns that are pretty unforgiving, but once you sort of know which ones they are, uh, you can generally just play it fairly safe and then not bump into anything unless you're going for like a PB or something. Even then, you generally still have to use your brakes. I wish I could catch the slipstream off of these cars in front of me, but alas, this is not a feature of this game. Okay, this is the first hard turn coming up. Um, I'm gonna try to... I have to brake a little bit, but I try to brake as little as possible. Uh, that was pretty good. Braking is annoying. You never want to have to hit the brakes in a speedrun, but it's way worse than going flying off the road. I got a little bit screwed up there with that van. Um, I had to brake a little more there than I normally like to, but otherwise I would have bonked into him. And again, uh, that's how you really lose time in uh, the runaway is running into things. So we're doing pretty good here. Uh, we're switching from a three-lane street to a two-lane street here. Um, for whatever reason, the uh, 
physics get a little more forgiving now, which is pretty nice because like that last turn was really nasty. But it feels a little bit looser than some of the earlier turns and uh, there's something that's kind of nice about that. Because I don't like hitting the brakes. I don't have to. Yeah, I bonked just a just the slightest of bonks there, but that's not the end of the world. I've had much worse. And now, uh, that was the last car. Uh, we're basically waiting to um, get into a load zone or a lo uh, load screen now. Um, I'm trying to keep my car as left as I can because the timer always resets to 217 uh, regardless of when you hit the loads the next zone so you just want to hit it as optimally as possible uh, and now we get the only um, this is like a cutscene but since we're controlling a car we still play it for the speed run um, but this gives like a really nice like three minute break to just kind of enjoy the fact that we're halfway through the run and read a bunch of donations. I started hanging out in the arcade almost every night. Standing there beside the other players, watching every move their fingers made. This was the real thing. Another life was just one credit away. Down here, I found new worlds and new meaning. I could be whoever I wanted to be. Travel to outer space, experience fantasy and fear, or just take a walk on the wild side of town. to somewhere a city on the horizon I drive all night to get to that place Oof. I always get chills and like nostalgia and feels when uh, that guitar hits uh, this cutscene is just really really cool really well narrated um, incredible music and uh, well done by the uh, the graphic designers uh, as well, just to create this like really memorable kind of night ride uh, into the city out of suburbia, which uh, is very metaphor is, is a very good metaphor for what kid wants out of life. Every move I mastered, I felt stronger, more confident. Some guy said I was cool bridge crazy. here. Completely out of touch with reality. You but never quite make it to the city, which I think is also sort of symbolic. I was in control. No one told me where to go. Or what to do. Uh, last little optimization that I actually just discovered recently. So the car has to go from 255 to zero before the game ends. Um, you can actually break it yourself all the way down, and then that saves uh, the time that the game would automatically slow you down. Um, so uh, that isn't something I knew when I set the world record. So that will be a possible improvement point in the future. And now we're back to the main menu. We got two games to go. 
Uh, these are the two longest of the five games, so um, they're pretty interesting. Uh, Shadow Play is kind of a ninja, uh, again, side scroller, auto scroller, uh, but it's definitely different than some of the other ones because there's jumps involved um, and platforms and traps and all sorts of nastiness. Um, if you're playing the game casually, Shadow Play is almost certainly going to be the hardest one. Uh, for most folks to complete just because there's also spots where if you don't time a jump quite right um, You'll also just die automatically so But uh, as we get going here, uh, we'll kind of uh, See some of the mechanics you want to collect these orbs um, to charge up your sword makes your um, Makes your uh, blade longer Actually missed a couple there uh, one thing I wanted to mention really quick is um, it's I haven't quite figured out since it's real this is a relatively new game uh, it doesn't have a lot of customization options uh, but I am trying to figure out a couple of uh, donation incentives and the two ideas that I've came up with both have to do with shadow play um, the first would be um, a challenge incentive where I have to get a hundred percent of the stuff in shadow play which is extremely difficult to do and it makes uh it really amps up the uh skill level uh basically right now i'm running any percent um but if i bumped it up to 100 percent, it would still be doable it would just take a lot more practice on my part um i have 100 percented individual stages before but not the entire game or the, yeah mini game i guess um, the other uh, donation incentive that I've been kicking around, which would take a lot more work, um, but if you listen in just a second uh, when I'm done narrating, uh, what you'll see is um, everything's got an audio cue generally in Shadow Play. Um, so I think it would be really cool to try and do a blindfolded Shadow Play. Might be a little too ambitious, but. Um, I will definitely think about it and at least try it out and see how it goes. Um, because again, it's an auto-timed auto-scroller. Uh, a lot of audio cues, like I said. Um, I don't think it would be impossible to um, do it blindfolded, uh, but it would definitely be a lot of work. And like the 100% would also be really difficult and probably look pretty cool. Um, you can kind of see here, there's some orbs I'm avoiding uh, just because it makes my life a little bit easier and they're not really required at this point. But um, yeah, I took a hit there. Uh, you have five life, by the way. So unless you run into something that automatically kills you, uh, five life is not, uh, five life is generally plenty to get through what we need to get through. Ooh, took another hit there. That's unfortunate. I really wanted to kill that uh, ninja enemy, but uh, it's okay. We're already back up to full um, power with those orbs. But like right here, like this section would be really interesting probably as like a 100% incentive. But if you're just trying to get through, like it's really easy to stay on that middle platform, so. I don't know, just a couple things um, to think about. Or I'm thinking about, um, I will definitely put in the work to uh, optimize um, the hype level of this game, just because I love it and it's a really, really fun game that I like showing off. Uh, this is the third stage. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but there's five stages in Shadow Play. Um, this is the waterfall stage. It's pretty easy. Everything kind of falls from the same spot, so you just kind of learn where the enemies all spawn in and then you uh, slash them when they do. Okay, um, and then this is stage four. Stage four is by far the hardest um, because in addition to everything else uh, that we've been dealing with so far, um, there's required jumps, there's required slides, um, as well as nasty new things like these rocks right here uh, that we have to avoid.
If I jump here, I die, by the way, because of those stakes. The one thing I do appreciate about this game, um, as someone who's n historically not been the greatest at platformers, is uh, the jump mechanics are fairly forgiving. Um, it's kind of like sticky jumping, so as long as you execute the jump, it's not... Um, like, you're not generally going to come up short on like a platform or jump too high or something like that um, when there's spikes and things like that. So, uh, it's mostly just making sure to jump, not... Um, Jumping at exactly the correct moment, which I appreciate. Still plenty skill intensive even without that. Alright, so that was stage four. Um, the last stage here coming up uh, has the final boss encounter as well. Um, this is a really cool boss. Uh, I love the design for it. It kind of reminds me of like a, a Miyazaki demon uh, Oni kind of thing because it's got the interesting mask and then it's kind of got like this black ooze like dripping off of it. So um, so this is always really fun. But uh, also this, this first pattern is not too difficult. Uh, you basically just, it's the same pattern every time that the boss attacks in. Um, as long as you alternate the middle and lower platforms, uh, you'll be fine for this first phase. The second phase is quite a bit more intense, and you do have to uh, memorize a slightly more complicated pattern in order to get through it. Um, there's a also a very difficult middle platforming section in the middle part here, so I'm going to need to focus on that right here. Okay, got it. Those spikes come up really quick if you're not paying attention. Um, okay, and then this is the second phase for the boss. Um, pattern's a little bit uh, more involved. It's longer. So uh, I just need to focus again here for a second. Okay, that's my cue. I can start alternating top and middle now. All right, and we're through with that shadow play. Making good time as well. Just waiting for the uh, visual cue here that I'm done. There it is. That one's actually got a really tight window, so you have to be careful. All right, and our last game is Kill Screen. Uh, Kill Screen is the RPG. Like all RPGs, uh, there is a heavy RNG element to it, so we'll see what kind of RNG we get today. Uh, in my world record run, I basically got perfect RNG, but the vast majority of the time, the RNG is such that you're probably going to take a death at the beginning. Um, it's pretty much unavoidable, just because uh, there's no way to flee from encounters. So if I get the encounter that's going to kill me, there's nothing I can do to escape it other than die and go back to the beginning. Um, the good news is once you hit level 3, it's pretty much impossible to die unless it's a uh, player error, so I'm going to do my best to avoid that. Uh, you always get this blue jellyfish for your first encounter. Um, the second encounter is where the RNG really starts to come into play. So we'll see what we get here. And I got the Cyclops, uh, but the good news is I got him right away. Um, this next attack will determine if I can kill him or not. Uh, I cannot, so uh, because he did that beam attack, it lowers my attack. Um, I do not have a way of dealing enough damage to kill him before he kills me now, so I'm just going to take this death as, as expeditiously as I can and go back to the beginning and then just hope that's my only death uh, of the run. Got the Cyclops again, but this time I should be okay because I have full health. Also, he did his good pattern, so I didn't get the strength down. Um, one nice thing about the maze is when you level up, so like I just got level 2, um, it refills your hit points. 
uh, so you can use that to your advantage at certain points. Um, this is also good that I got him now, because I will get level 3 after this, I believe. Gonna play it safe here. But um, basically, once, like I said, oh, I'm not quite level 3 yet. Um, I want to be level 3 for the first dragon, um, so hopefully this will time out. Um, this is actually a little dicey. Um, if I get that bad pattern again, I might die. We'll see. I got the good pattern. Okay, we're good. And level 3, um, I'm almost to the first dragon. I am also error, apparently. But uh, the first dragon does a uh, preemptive attack, so you really need your hit points high. Uh, but after that, he's uh, not too dangerous just because um, his attacks are weaker than the other two dragons. So I just have to be a little bit safe here, get through the fight. I'll always level up again after I get through this fight as well, which is nice. All right, that's our first dragon. Uh, one cool little optimization that I'm doing right here is uh, I'm backpedaling out of the dragon fights. Uh, you save a couple frames doing that rather than turning around and running back because then I would have to turn again to get down uh, the next hallway. Level 5. Okay. Getting a lot of encounters right now. At this point, I basically don't need any more encounters to finish the game, so every time I have to fight an enemy, it's actually just slowing me down. Which, um, you know, not the end of the world, but ideally, I want to go fast, so... Ru cruising right along here towards the next dragon. Now I'm getting a good stretch with no encounters, which is what we like to see. Um, but anyway, just uh, moving right along here. And I'll be coming up on the second dragon fight here in just a second. Uh, I'm going to have to be a little careful because my hit points are low, but I should be fine as long as I play it safe. Yep, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure this is going to take four hits now, but I got it, so. Okay, uh, one dragon to go. Got a synth enemy for the first time, so we're going to see the hack attack, because that is what they are weak to. And those dragons give so much XP, I'm actually already going to get level seven here. Uh, again, like I said, the levels don't really matter. Like, uh, you really don't need anything past, like, level four to complete the game, but... Um, you're going to run into enemies and you can't run from them, so you just have to kill them optimally and uh, keep plowing through here. This isn't that bad in terms of RNG uh, and encounter rates. Um, I would say this is pretty standard. And I'm very glad that my one death that I got was right at the beginning, because a lot of times, if you get a bad pattern, you can die like right in front of the first dragon, which is very suboptimal, as I'm sure you can imagine. Just uh, the more you have to backtrack, the worse things are going to be. There's also green and red uh, jellyfish. I have not run into any of them yet, which is actually just fine with me as well, because they take a lot more to kill. Oh, right on cue, there's the green one. Um, and I picked the wrong attack, I don't know. I got the green and red ones mixed up in my head. Uh, they are also weak to hack. 
Uh, but we're almost to the final dragon, so it doesn't really matter in my um, estimation. I will be just fine here, and I'm also going to hit level 8, so... Alright, here's the last dragon. The final boss will actually spawn right after this fight. Uh, one thing about the final boss is there's actually a glitch that we can do with the final boss. Um, however, I'm not going to be doing that for my submission or marathon run if I get accepted. Um, and the reason why is because uh, about, I would say, based on my experience, about 10% of the time, uh, the game will, also, will just soft lock on you uh, if you glitch the fight out. But if you're ever going for a PB attempt, um, you will glitch this fight. So it just... Uh, Okay, there we go. I was worried it glitched out because it took so long for my attack uh, selection to load up there. But this is motherboard. There's a lot of mom issues uh, in the lore, I believe, of 1980X. Um, so basically what's going on here is I can't damage motherboard. Um, all I can do is kind of optimally cycle through my attacks uh, once I use an attack twice, it'll get locked out. Uh, the glitch, for those of you that are curious, is we can backpedal out of that dragon fight. And if the game uh, gives us a regular encounter, in the meantime, it'll actually load in the regular encounter. And then it'll load Motherboard in on top of that. Um, when that happens, the game gets kind of confused. It doesn't quite know what to do. So it will um, allow you to do your inputs a lot faster because you'll notice here, um, basically between each of the attack inputs, I'm having to wait like five seconds or so before my attack menu pops up. Um, that's not what happens in the glitched encounter. They kind of, it pops back up almost right away. So you can kind of just keep putting the inputs in. Um, but again, because there's multiple ways that you can soft lock the game doing that, um, I'm not gonna do that glitch today. Um, but that was the final fight of the run. Uh, we're basically just uh, hanging out till the final credits start here. Uh, there is one more input that we have to do, so I'm waiting to do that. Uh, and then we will uh, be done. So thank you so much for, uh, again, considering this game. Uh, I think it's a fun game. I think it would be a great inclusion in the marathon just because of the variety of gameplay um, and just the nostalgia and how well it fits in with a lot of other different kinds of games that might be what happened that a part day? of the marathon. So I honestly couldn't say I appreciate the opportunity to share it with you today. I'm still there, but nothing was the same. And I'm just waiting to do my final input here. I have to uh, push button to get up, which is done. And now all my uh, my friends from the arcade are going to kind of join me here and I'm going to respawn ready to take on the world. We know these guys and gals. The game was not over. We are ready to go and it was just beginning. Time. All right, so that was 3625. That's a really good time, I would say, um, for the submission. I got a lot of really good splits, so I'm really happy with that. Um, but yeah, uh, again, this is 1980X, no cutscenes. Uh, I'm Moonblaze Wolf, and thank you again for uh, considering this run.